Unquestionably, <clears throat> the perfect praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whosoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I openly bear witness that there is no God, no deity, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the one, having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Rabbi Shrak bil Sadri wa yasadli amri wa khlatu khlatami lisani yakharu kawli. Oh my Lord, expand my chest for me. <coughs> Make my task easy for me. Remove the impediment from my tongue so they may understand what I say. Listening to the young brother call the other day, and I was thinking about cotton mouth for Ramadan. And I need this dua. This dua is from Musa, Moses, before he went to the Pharaoh. So not only do I have an impediment of not having Arabic as my mother tongue, but also I got a little bit of cotton mouth, so bear with me. That's what wudu is for, it's a way to, to, to lighten your palate. So you're able to speak and enunciate when you're talking in front of people also to cleanse out your mouth a little bit. So Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amilu taqu haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Oh you who believe, Allah's talking to the believers. Regard your duty to Allah in truth as it should be regarded, and do not die, except in a state of submission to Allah, except as a Muslim and Muslim. We have made it to the last Friday, the last Juma of Ramadan. We know the blessings of Ramadan, the blessings of <coughs> Juma and Friday, in connection to Ramadan. We know that we are in the last 10 days of Ramadan. The first 10 days are the days of mercy. We ask Allah for mercy. The second 10 days was for forgiveness. And these last 10 days are asking Allah for his protection from the hellfire. This is what your dua and my dua should be, my supplication to be, should be to him during these last 10 days. To remove the punishment of the hellfire from us. As Muslims, we strive for righteousness, to execute good deeds, 
to avoid wrongdoing, to stay as righteous as we possibly can. And Allah has promised us paradise for our obedience to him, to turn to him for forgiveness. The Prophet, Musa, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam says, the best of Adam alayhi salam's children are those who repent to Allah. So we know that Allah is al-Ghafur, the great forgiver. Al-Ghafur, the all-forgiving. Al-Afu, the supreme pardoner. Al-Tawab, the acceptor of repentance. These are some of his names and attributes and descriptions of him, of his sunnah, his way, his nature, his character. We must realize that he does not have to forgive us, but he placed mercy upon himself. He made a remedy for sins and wickedness, an antidote, a cure for sin, which is tawbah, which is turning or repenting, coming to him. Our God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so loving, so compassionate, so merciful, so benevolent, so gracious that he gave us the answer key to all the tests. He gave us the password to get an A on this ultimate test. The mighty, majestic Allah Azza wa Jal says, ask me to forgive you, and I will. He tells us in the Quran, Ya ibadiya ladina asrafu ala an kusihim la tap naftu min rahmati lahi in Allah ya gafuru du yuba jami an inna hu hu al gafuru rahim. It is translated, O oh my servants who have exceeded limits against your own soul. Do not lose hope in Allah's mercy, for Allah certainly forgives all sins. He is indeed the all-forgiving, the most merciful. Allah says in this ayah, jami'an, from the same root as juma, meaning gathered together. Allah says he'll take all your sins all together and forgive them. Allah says his ibadiyah, his servants. So you have to believe in Allah and trust in him. Do the service for Allah <coughs> Azawajal. And if you have exceeded the limits of your own soul, transgressed your own soul, corrupted your own soul with sin, he says, do not despair. Do not lose hope. Allah's mercy is far more greater than your sin. You know, there are people who have fear of coming into these doors, coming into the doors of the masjid because they believe that they are not worthy to come in these doors. They have this false impression that inside these walls are angels and saints. Well, there are angels in here. Allah has angels in here for Juma and recording those people who come into Juma and for everything that we do. But there are no sinless saints here. We are all men and women of repentance. We are like the sick that come to the hospital. We come to this sanctuary to be healed with higher, which is modesty, and shame for our bad deeds. The difference between us and everybody else is that we acknowledge our sin and we want, we want to change. We are desperately trying to change and make amends for our sins. And we sincerely ask our Lord for forgiveness. And he says, Turn to your Lord and fully submit to him before punishment reaches you, for then there will be no help. For Allah as a wajal to demonstrate his forgiveness, someone has to sin. <coughs> the question is, will you return to him? Will you turn to him? 
Will you submit yourself and your will to his will? Or do you think that you know better than your maker? That is the key. Allah Azza wa Jal gives you your entire life to turn back to him. The problem is, we don't know when that life will end. So every day that you sin, and don't ask for repentance, you turn your nose to Allah Azza wa Jal and his mercy. You take him for granted. You think he'll give you tomorrow. You think, I'll change. I'll ask for forgiveness when I'm finished sinning, when I'm tired of sinning, when I get as much money as I want, I get as many pleasures as I want. But do you want to die in a state of submission to Allah as a wajal or die in a state of rebellion to him? Take the rest of this Ramadan to beg the most merciful for his forgiveness, for his grace, for taking him for granted and taking your life for granted, for corrupting your own soul and anyone else that you may have come in contact with. The fastest way into the hellfire is guidance or misguidance into the hellfire with you. Those people are oftentimes prideful of their sins and they enjoin wickedness. Ramadan is leaving us soon. Make sure you ask Allah Azza wa Jal to ask him for guidance and refuge from this hellfire. Let me take a moment and ask the brothers, hopefully they can hear me outside to bring some more chairs for the sisters. Hope you all hear me out there, brother. If not yet, please let them know. <clears throat> and while we are still in the month of Ramadan, let me clear up something that was discussed in the Ramadan session I was in last week. First, let's remember that not everyone has been a Muslim for 20 years. This may be their first or second Ramadan. I know a brother specifically who took his Shahada Tain a couple years ago. And he says he feels awkward when he comes into the masjid and people greet him or he greets them and they say something extra than what he said and they don't, he doesn't know what to say. So if you say Ramadan Mubarak to someone and they don't respond, or they respond in the same way, in the same kind, I want to explain this for you. Or you say Assalamu Alaikum or Rahmatullahi to someone and they say Assalamu Alaikum, it's back to you. It is probably or possibly because they don't know the response to give. So that, again, this subject came up in the Ramadan session I was in in North Carolina last weekend. In our association of Imam Warafi Muhammad, when someone says Ramadan Mubarak, we say Ramadan Mubarak back. This may be confusing to some people. The common response, at least in America, amongst Muslims is to Ramadan Mubarak is Ramadan Kareem. But we are following a certain logic. Let me also be clear here that we do not condemn or disparage anyone, any Muslim, any believer who says Ramadan Kareem. As Muslims, we are all trying our very best to adhere to the commandments of Allah as a wajal and follow the life example of Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our brothers and sisters are sincere when they say Ramadan Kareem and ultimately Allah, Allah knows best. Allah tells us in the Quran, wa and when you are greeted, respond with a better greeting or return it back. Allah as a first tells us to give a hasana, a better greeting. And after that, he says an equal greeting. We oftentimes just do the second. Somebody gives us a greeting, we respond exactly back, but Allah tells us initially to give a better greeting. And our Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wa salam, says when Adam, alayhi salam, was created, Allah told him to go and greet the angels and listen to their response back to you. Whatever their greeting is, is the greeting for you and the children of Adam. So he goes to the angels and he says, assalamu alaikum. And they reply, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
He says, Assalamu alaikum. They say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allah gave us this greeting since the time of Adam alayhi salam. And the angels gave him a better greeting. They expanded the greeting. They added wa rahmatullah, which means, and the mercy of Allah. So giving a better greeting is like if a brother says, Assalamu alaikum, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Right? So you are expanding the greeting. You are making the greeting better that you're giving back. To give him the same greeting, you would say, Wa alaykum salam, or you would say, Assalamu alaykum. And some of us say, Assalamu alaykum, back to Assalamu alaykum, to be in adherence strictly with what Allah says. He says, give an equal greeting. If it's equal, we say the right, the exact same thing back. A man came to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam and said, Assalamu alaykum. And the Prophet returned the greeting. And after that, the man sat down and he said, Ting. Another man came to our Prophet and said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And the Prophet returned the greeting in the same manner and said, 20. And then another man came and said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For those people who are new Muslims, they are saying, may the, peace be of, may the peace be upon you, may the mercy of Allah be upon you, and barakah means the blessing of Allah be upon you. So when that person said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, the Prophet says, 30. The Prophet returned the greeting and gave it back and said, it is as you see, it's multiples of 10. So the greater the greeting, the greater the blessing. And that's how we should be thinking, to try to give a greater blessing. Now speaking of the returning the greetings equally, there were Jewish people in Medina who would say, Assalamu alaikum to the Prophet. He will return the greeting. As we know, we should know from the people of the, the people of the scripture, the people of the book, in their scripture, in the Bible, Jesus or Isa alayhi salam speaks to his disciples and they speak back and say, Shalom alaykum. Peace be upon you. Right? As I was just mentioning, Adam knew this. This is something that has been going on through time. So the Jewish people of Arabia would come to the Prophet and say, Assalamu alaykum. And if they were in Medina, they spoke Arabic, so they said, Assalamu alaikum, probably just as we do. But some of them were being sinister with their greeting. And the Prophet said, Inna Yahuda ida salama alaikum ahaduhum, fa inna ma yahulu samu alaikum, fa kul alaika. When the Jews said, Assalamu alaikum, one of them said, Assamu alaikum which means death unto you. And the prophet responded back, Walika, and to you also. <laughs> <laughs> he gave right back to them what they gave him, something of equal value. At this time, Aisha, radiallahu anha, was with him. Like any loving wife, when her husband is being disparaged and disrespected, she was enraged, infuriated. She responded back to him, death to you and despair to you also, right? And our prophet, being merciful, said, calm down, I got this. Don't, don't worry about them. Right? Don't worry about them. I just said, I and to you also. But let us remember that our greeting is not just a greeting, but a prayer. It will be spoken in paradise. Allah Azawajal also employs this same greeting to the noble in the noble Quran, the noble a generous Kareem Quran, to address his beloved prophets as a mark of favor and esteem to them. He says, Peace be upon Noah, peace be upon Abraham, peace be upon Moses and Aaron, peace be upon Elijah. He also says, Peace be upon those who warn. And Allah says, Peace be upon his servants whom he has chosen. Allah gives us, his servants, salams. I told you all a couple of weeks ago in our khutbah that we are chosen. The mus, the mu'min, are the chosen people of Allah as a wajah. So Allah greets us with salams, not just the prophets, but also the believers. The angel Jibril came to the house of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Khadijah radiallahu anha was there. And Jibril says, Allah sent his salams to Khadijah. And the prophet says, O Khadijah, Allah 
is sending his salams to you. And she says, Allah is excellent. He is the peace, the source of all peace. And she returns it to Jibril. She says, and to you be as-salam, and to Rasulullah, to her husband. She calls him the messenger of Allah, as-salam. That's how important this salam is, this greeting that we give is. The angels will be giving it to us, and they give it to us, wishing peace on the believers. And most scholars think the translation, may peace be upon you, is a shallow translation for assalamu alaikum. That it is incomplete. That a better translation could be, may you remain safe from every pain and sorrow and distress. It is a means of expressing love and affection for your brother and sister in faith. In fact, it is a wonderful prayer to give. It's, it also carries a commitment that the person that is being greeted will in no way face any harm or discomfort from the person giving the greeting. If any of you ever seen the movie, the alien movie, I Come in Peace, that's the sentiment that we are trying to give with Assalamu Alaikum. We're trying to convey that we are coming in peace. So if you give the greeting and then you don't come in peace, you are breaking your oath. You are violating your prayer that you're giving to them. And not just to that one person. Alaykum means everyone. So you're not just breaking your oath to that one person you're telling, but to everybody else. You swear to them that you will do them no harm. And then you stab them in the back and you talk harshly to them. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam says a Muslim is the one from whom all Muslims remain safe. Safe from their tongue, safe from his tongue, and safe from his hand. So Muslims are supposed to be guardians for one another. This place should be a safe haven from disbelief and disbelievers. The masjid and the masajid, the Islamic centers in the Hampton Roads area should be the safest places for Muslims to go. They shouldn't come here and fear, feel any hardship or any anxiety or any hostility. And giving salams is the first part of that feeling of safety and security. Salam and Salim and Islam and Muslim and Muslima are all related to safety and security and peace and serenity. That is our goal, that is our aim, that is what we are striving for in this deen. So this greeting is vitally important for them. It is also our right, our right to have someone return the greeting back to us as believers. Now there are rules to greetings. The prophet says the first person riding or the person riding should offer the salams to the person who is walking. The person who is walking should give salams to the person who is sitting. The small group that is pursuing the large group should give the salams first. When you enter a house, you should give salam to the person who is inviting you and to everybody in there for gracing you with their hospitality. Now, to be clear, the return of the greeting is our right, but there are times when you don't have to give the greeting. For example, if you are, if someone, a brother comes into a masala and says, Assalamu alaikum, and you are in the middle of prayer, whether it's sunnah prayer or far prayer, the sunnah prayer is the prayer that the prophet played us outside of the five prayers, the four prayers that we pray. But if you're in the middle of prayer, you don't give salams. If the muabin is calling the adhan and somebody comes up to him and says, assalamu alaikum, he doesn't stop the adhan to give salams. But also, the blessing of giving salams first is something that the prophet stressed. The first to give the salams gets more blessing than the one that's receiving it. So the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, the person nearest to Allah is the one who gives the greeting first. When the prophet explained this, the brothers and sisters were clamoring to be the first to give salams. They would call people, give them salams from 30, 40 yards away. And this is how it should be. We should be excited to see our brothers and sisters and give them prayers of peace and safety and security. <laughs> Prophet also says, when one of you meets a brother in faith, you should give him the greetings. If there is a tree or a wall or a stone that in, in, intervenes in between you, after you get around that wall or that tree or that rock, rock 
give them the greeting again. So after this, brothers and sisters, they was leaving the masjid for no reason and come back just to give the greeting again. Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, the son of Umar, didn't need food, didn't need clothing, didn't need anything, but he would go to the marketplace just to give Muslims the salam. Conversely, there are stories of two Sahaba, which are companions of the Prophet, when they met one of them, never gave the greeting to the other. And the, the other brother felt distressed. He felt maybe I wronged him in some way, maybe he disliked me for some reason, so he went to the Prophet with this problem. The Prophet confronted the brother and says, why don't you give him the greeting? And he says, I want him to get the blessing for greeting me first every time that we meet. This is more than brotherhood. This is how the brotherhood and sisterhood should be. Not just wanting for your brother what you want for yourself, but wanting more for them. He gave him an opportunity to get more blessings than he did. Abu Hara, the person who compiled an infinite or an ultimate amount of uh, hadith, he says the most Stingy person is one who is stingy in giving the greetings, giving salams. The brothers and sisters that don't return the greetings to you, something they can give away for free, they don't give it to you, don't give you their right. He also says, as the prophet says, if a tree comes between you and your brother, and you are able to be the first one around that tree, give them the greetings first. Again, this is how important our greeting, our salams are. Let us stop now and ask Allah for forgiveness. The perfect praise belongs to Allah, the guardian of all, the, of all systems of knowledge. May Allah's blessings and peace be bestowed upon our noble leader, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his companions, upon his followers, all of us, all together, all over this world. But back to Ramadan Mubarak or Ramadan Kareem. Mubarak means blessed. Kareem means generous. Translated literally, Ramadan Mubarak means blessed Ramadan. The term Mubarak is derived from the Arabic root, the B, the R, and the K. Mubarakara Matak, Kaf, which broadly means blessings and goodness. So when you say Ramadan Mubarak, you are essentially wishing someone a blessed and fruitful Ramadan, filled with goodness and divine grace. When you say Ramadan Kareem, you, it is translated generous Ramadan. The word Kareem comes from the K, the R, and the M, denoting generosity and honor. This reading embodies the spirit of generosity that is especially encouraged during the month of Ramadan. Reflecting the boundless, the boundless benevolence and sustenance from God during this month. So, would you rather someone bless you or be generous to you? Generosity suggests someone's giving you monetary or material or something tangible. It suggests an excess in giving out of kindness giving more than what is normal, that they give you already and they give you a little bit more. Blessings also encompass generosity. It suggests something that is outside of the norm. Blessings are almost an anomaly. If someone continuously gives you, then it loses some of its value. It is expected. Instead of looking forward to something, you are expecting it to occur. When you say someone blessed you, it's a special event. It is a rare moment of unprecedented spiritual giving that facilitates material giving. The Quran is called Kareem, generous, 
because it continually gives to you and you can open it at any time. One of Allah's attributes, one of his names is al qarim the generous, because he continuously gives. <coughs> Your every breath that you take shows the generosity that Allah gives you. And you can expect to give for most of your life until the end. But the Quran was revealed only once. It is a blessing to all of humanity. It is commemorated in this month of Ramadan. Ramadan does not happen every day or every week or every month, but every year. And we hope to see it. We hope to be blessed by it. Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, is the night that we hope to reach, to receive the bark of the blessings of a thousand months. With this in mind, Mubarak is better than Kareem. So saying Ramadan Kareem is not returning a better or equal greeting in our estimation. It is a subtle difference, but an important one to many Muslims. And perhaps more importantly, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is recorded as saying, there has come to you Ramadan, a blessed month. Allah has made it obligatory on you to fast. During it, the gates of paradise are open and the gates of hell are locked and the devils are chained up. In it, there are, is a night that is better than a thousand months. And so who, whoever is deprived of its greatness is deprived indeed. The phrase specifically mentioned in the Sunnah from the words of Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Shahrun Mubarak, the blessed month. Therefore, Shahrun Mubarak or Ramadan Mubarak is better and more accurate in the greeting to say than Ramadan Kareem. In France, it is common to say Ban Ramadan, which means good Ramadan. In different languages, people say different things, even for the word Ramadan. If you speak Urdu or Hindu, you say Ramzan. If you are speaking Albanian, it's Ramazan. If you're speaking Bosnian, it's Ramazan. If you're speaking Kurdish, it's Mimizan. If you're speaking Pashto, it's Razha. It's almost completely different. Somali is Rabadan. Turkish is Ramazan, Zazaki is Mimizan. But the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says specifically Ramadan Mubarak. And Allah says, give the greeting that is better or that is equal. That is why when we say Ramadan Mubarak, many of us say back Ramadan Mubarak. And I hope this is beneficial to anybody who would need it. I want to end this kutbah, kutbah by appealing to your strength, to your fortitude. In the last 10 days of Ramadan, you can see the finish line, see the goal line. And if any of you have ever run a football field, 100 yard football field, you start slowing down once you get to the end. You start getting tired and get winded. Perhaps this is why Allah Azza wa Jal in his infinite wisdom put the night of power in the last 10 days. I know some of you have, including myself, have slacked on eating healthier. You wake up in the middle of the night, get those cookies that you hid from yourself. If you really didn't want to eat them, you, would have, you wouldn't have bought them, right? You're slacking on your reading a little bit. You're slacking on your reciting. You're slacking on your prayers because you want to sleep more, because you feel more tired. This is human nature. We, uh, we all get weak and we all feel vulnerable at times. We all fall, but as Muslims, we get up and we endure. There are Muslims who are starving and dying, being killed in Gaza. Israel is targeting humanitarian aid workers to continue to starve Muslims. <coughs> if they can endure, then we can endure. Some of our ancestors were enslaved and many of them still fasted under the worst and most harsh conditions known to humanity. Brothers and sisters, guess who else had hardship in the last 10 days of Ramadan? But Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Aisha radiallahu anha says, the messenger of Allah would struggle to perform salat during these last 10 days more than the rest of Ramadan. He was only human like you and I was. He was weak and tired. But he is also our example, our model, our leader. And what did he do when he was struggling? Aisha radiallahu anha says, in the last 10 days when he was struggling, he literally would tighten his belt and get to work. When he was tired, he prayed hard. He prayed all night and kept the family up all night praying with him. This is what happens to somebody who has the mercy for all of the world. He laced up his boots, tightened his sandals, and went to work. Just like us, he did not know when the they looked to cousin the night of power was. Allah as a wajil caused him to forget it. So he was praying all night just as we should be, trying to get those blessings of a thousand months. Now we have an extra incentive, an extra blessing. On Monday, if we make it, inshallah, we'll witness a solar eclipse during the month of Ramadan. That's more prayer, more blessing. So when you get tired, like the prophet, give more, do more, read more, study more, recite more. It is a blessing that only happens once a year and you might not make it next year. It is commemorating the revelation from Allah as a wajil to us, the Quran. Nothing like it has come before and nothing ever will come like it again. Let us remember to use this time wisely. Even though you're weak, even though you're tired, Use your strength to get up and do more. Rabbana inanna amana kakfilana dunubana wakina adabano. Our Lord, indeed we have believed. So forgive us our sins and protect us from the torment of the hell fire. Rabbana attendi fidunya hasanatan wa fil atirati hasanatan wakina adabano. Our Lord, give us good in this life and in the hereafter and guard us from the torment of the hell fire. King of Salah. Sharia 
وسوسی الحماس الناس اللي بصوا في في كلوا الناس من الجناس والناس الله announcement that are pretty serious announcements particularly for the Eid and some other things that pertain to the masjid so bear with me. Um, um, the first one has to do with Monday the eclipse. Um, from what I gathered uh, the eclipse will be from around 2 o'clock to 4 30 so we'll be in here um, praying um, the, the prayer for the eclipse uh, at that time on Monday inshallah. Um, the Eid, we had uh, some communication with uh, yeah. the convener yeah. about eclipses. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the end of Ramadan, will, it's, um, it is estimated to be on the 9th, so the Eid will be on the 10th. But I still want you all to be cautious because if we don't cite it, it'll be here to be the following day. So please wait for our communication for that. I know other communities are using the calculation that we are using. The uh, sighting of the moon to determine when Ramadan ends. So please, I'll, I'll send out notification as soon as I find out. And unfortunately, it's generally two o'clock in the morning. So, uh, but it is definitely estimated, strongly estimated, that it will be on the ninth. Uh, will be the last day, and then the end will be on the tenth. So, if that's the case, we'll do the prayer with the larger community at the Virginia Beach Field House. It's at Twenty Twenty Lansdowne Center Way in Virginia Beach, the one that we go to. Every year, I think for Eid al Adha, we went to uh, across to Hampton, but we generally go for this Eid to uh, Virginia Beach Field House, and we'll be going there and then coming back here to give out the gifts to the kids and to eat. Uh, but just please just um, wait for the notification for that just to be certain. Um, also, something very important is uh, during this Ramadan, two times, uh, at least two times, maybe more than that, we had to come in here three times to. Uh, make sure we cleaned up the water in here so we can pray our Juma prayers. Uh, the reason we have been not able to do iftars and schedule Halloween prayer is because the flooding is terrible that's happening now, right? Um, I've talked to some council members, well not council members, but mem members of the city to address this. They told me to go to the council meeting on April 10th, which is next week. It will probably be on our Eid day. It's at six o'clock at Granby High School, so everybody was able to attend I need you all to attend because the flooding is coming all the way into here, into the masala. Right now, the brother standing right here, you can hear the plastic underneath. That's what it is, so we won't flood again, so we can continue to pray. So I need you all. You don't have to come and speak, but if you want to speak, alhamdulillah. The three-minute time you get to speak to the um, to the council members and tell them you want money dedicated to this 35th Street corridor specifically for us as our prayer is on the ground, our face is on the ground. So I've told this to everyone. We said... Um, the best thing we can do is go to the uh, budget meetings, April 10th, grab your high school. So please, if you kind of come to attend this, we don't even, you don't have to speak if you don't want to, but you definitely can, you have to sign up to speak. So I'm gonna be speaking and probably a couple of, anybody else who wants to. And then if you just come and when I, when I stand up, I just ask everybody who's in uh, support of it just to stand up with me. 
where the council members and the mayor knows that we are uh, really adamant about this and we really need this done. So if April 10th is the date, I'll also send this out via email so people are aware of it. And I'll ask the other communities as well to help and assist it, because I spoke to someone from Ashura and they said they have flooding there as well. House of Consciousness, everybody on this block, 600, 500 plus, um, have issues with this flooding. What time? Uh, it is 6 o'clock, Gravy High School. Um, so, inshallah, we're going to have a week prayer tonight, um, barring any issues, in the, uh, any, anything that's happening outside of that, so we'll have it tonight, inshallah. Um, Sunday, we'll have the Arabic class at 11 o'clock, and Salim at 1 o'clock. Uh, also, um, Imam Hamidullah's son returned to Allah. There's going to be a uh, memorial service tomorrow at 2 o'clock at the uh, Metropolitan Funeral Home on Zambi Street. So anybody, anybody that wants to come to attend, this is the memorial service for him tomorrow at uh, 2 o'clock. His son's name is uh, Timothy Anthony. So please, if you can't come to attend this, I think emails are sent out, but I just want to make sure everybody else is aware of this. Um, he, he returned to Allah mm -hmm. a week over a week ago. Um, did I mention anything? Oh, please don't forget your zakat, your zakat obligations, and your zakat of fitr. We are still collecting funds for the children, for those people who are in need, and we have to have it before the Eid because we want to give the monies and funds to those people who are in need before the Eid. So please put it in before then, before the ninth. Uh, so we can give it to those people who are in need uh, before then. And that is $6 for children, $12 for adults. Yes. I found that um, there was an email that went out that if you are going to um, keep your children out of school during the evening, you're going to come, please let me know so that we can have gifts here for your children. Certainly. So that way we'll know, we'll get a, a rough estimate of how many kids will come, so we'll make sure we have gifts so everybody is included in everything that we're giving. Uh, so please uh, let us know. Uh, let us know a rough estimate. If one or two more kids come, I mean that that yeah, won't hurt. But we do want to know a kind of rough rough estimate. Yes, ma'am. And don't forget to uh, ask them when they can sign up sheet for the school. Oh yeah. 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 You might as well forget um, something. So. Well, that sheet to fill up. <laughs> yeah, we please did that that sheet to fill up for those people who are going to bring food for the eats for us to eat. Um, it's right outside here under the um, lamp out there. So please yeah. put up what you're going to bring. So we can uh, have it festive there. Also, the brother wanted me to remind you all about the Muslim Journal. You can apply to it for it yourself, or you can buy it from here for two dollars. We have the up-to-date Muslim Journal um, every time it comes out. So it's, we have some there now for two dollars if you want those. Um, oh yes, also we are selling the um, the uh, the guide to fasting that Imam Vernon Farid um, wrote. I showed you a copy of it last week. I have some copies now, and they are. How much is it? Uh, I'll find out how much it is. I can't remember what she told me. Right. Right. They got so much stuff going on, um, y'all. So, assalamu alaikum. Also, remember those people who are sick, those people who are not here because they want to be here. I promise you, I'm getting correspondence from them. They're just not able to get here because of an illness or sickness that they are um, that they are dealing with right now. So, please keep people in your du'a. If there's somebody that I don't know about, please let me know. Yes, sir. What happened to the sign-in sheet? Which one? Oh, oh we, don't, we didn't need the sign-in sheet. Uh, we were using it for in case we would be um, audited by the city of, to find out how much how many people came in for uh, for the congregational prayers. But it was really unnecessary. Every every place that we've been to, nobody does that. It's kind of antiquated at this point. So we uh, got rid of that. So we're trying to get uh, more up-to-date uh, we're going to have some more things on websites. We're going to have a lot of things. I, I want to share with you all some things that I um, experienced at the Ramadan session. They had uh, a young brother and sister who actually will be a part of this. Um, it's called the Muslim Cultural Khan Retreat. I got some of those out there on the, on the uh, table. Young adults, Muslims, that are um, taking the bull by the horn, so to speak. Um, they air their grievances about what the the older community is not allowing them to do or impeding them from to, to do so they can expand and increase. They, they're young Muslims who want to be a part of the community, but they feel like their voices are being heard. And this was happening there. The Muslims from, they came from Atlanta, so Muslims from North Carolina, Muslims from Philly, 
all of them were uh, kind of voicing this, um, their concerns with the older generation, giving them the ability to kind of express themselves and to learn more. Uh, something that we definitely need. We are all getting older. Y'all see the gray hairs I got here, right? I'm not getting the young, any younger. So we want the young brothers and sisters that come here for Juma to stay here and more young brothers and sisters to come here. So our goal is not to push them away, to, but to bring them here because this is the truth. That's what we're here for, right? We're here because it is the absolute truth. And they need it just as they need it more than we do. We know it's the truth already. There's people walking around who don't. The last thing I'm going to say is I told them, and uh, I told uh, I think I've told you all that 99% of the people, African Americans, 99% of Americans are not Muslim. We represent 1% of America. So the large majority don't know this deen is true. So we got work to do, right? So everybody come through those doors, I ask the, I ask the security to let me know so I can shake the hand, talk to them, do whatever. We gotta make them all feel comfortable because we want everybody, we want this place to fill up so we have to get a second floor and a third floor, right? And we should. <laughs> Yes, we have an actual truth, right? Why shouldn't this place be full? Why does it not? Mustafa. We don't have any brothers. Okay, so with the um, okay, I got this, 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 I got they're doing DZ days and Indy Jones days. You remember them days? Yeah, man. You knew my fella priced off boys. Yeah, yeah. My sister said, you remember that? She thinks that was my dad. Oh! That's my sister. And Sharon. Yeah. I'm going on. I talked to me a lot about it. You say he had something going on. Yeah. Son. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, when is the service as far as son? That's tomorrow at six to two o'clock at uh, Metropolitan on Granby Street. Oh, okay. Is it? So I'm gonna write down, I'm gonna give you my write down my cell phone.
number? Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't bring my glasses in or not, bro. Uh, what? What? Where well, I sign it right here? Can you see that? Um, right here. Sign right there, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I need somebody looking out for me, man. <laughs>